Hey, all my crafty people. It is time for a new project, and I um, want to do something with these jeans. Uh, if you haven't been here before, my name is Stephanie, and I upcycle clothing, generally thrifted items from my local stores. And this particular pair of jeans I thrifted for $1.99 at the American Thrift. They are 100% cotton. I don't know for sure that I would consider them vintage. I think they're definitely pretty old. It's This coloring is, is not just the way they were made. Um, but they are also three sizes too big for me. And the reason I bought them that way is I want to not only change them into some summer shorts, but I want to do it in a way that I'm going to take the sides up and then re-stitch them together, but I'm going to do it in a different way than we have in the past. So it's going to be a fun project. I think it's going to involve some lace. We'll see. Who knows? So if you like this kind of content or if you want to follow along, check it out. Subscribe, comment, let me know what you think, and let's get to the table. All right, here we are at the table. This is our pair of jeans. They are Lee Riders. And I, I think they're old, but this patch isn't leather, so I'm not sure how old they are. This, uh, they're definitely 100% cotton, and they've got a great fade to them. Like I said, they're already, they're too big for me, which is great, because what we're gonna do, once we cut them off to the length we want, we're gonna cut them up the sides to do the alterations and the patching or lace or whatever we decide to do with them. And when we sew them back together, we're not gonna worry about tucking that seam back in. We're going to use the outside and we're gonna do an outside seam for maximum frame. It's not something I do uh, a lot, but I'm, I'm kind of keen to give it a try. And it makes it a little simpler. I mean, this is just gonna be somewhere around the house out to Walmart kind of shorts anyway so this is the shorts I mean this is the pants but the day after I did the intro I got this at Joann's now they have kind of tried to up their game in formal wear fabric and this is a beautiful piece of fabric that was in the scrap bin it was a yard of it 75% off which is my favorite time to get stuff and majority, the majority of these flowers are three-dimensional. So they, they poke up, and you can just take them directly off of the mesh and use them as an applique. The ones that aren't three-dimensional are still something you could just snip around and take off and use as an applique. So I'm pretty excited about these. I think these are going to be fun. Even these little ones are um, three-dimensional. And... Um, so we're going to decorate our shorts with some of these. Like I said, I got a whole yard of it, so I've got plenty. I do have some lace. We may be adding lace. But the first thing we need to do is we need to cut these off. Now I'm a firm believer in just cutting them straight across. I'm not fancy about it. I want to make sure I don't catch my pockets, which they're, they're women's jeans, so there's never going to be a chance you're going to do that because the pockets are so small. So let me get these lined up perfectly. We'll get our big scissors out. Might even get those monster, uh, what is it, the electric ones? And we'll cut them off, and then we're gonna come up the sides and work on them from a completely flattened view. All right, now generally speaking, when you cut a pair of shorts off, or cut a pair of jeans off for shorts, there's an angle to the leg. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't go straight across. And I went ahead and went through some of my shorts and noticed because I'm so stinking tall, I only have like a three inch inseam in most of my shorts. Because <laughs> I can't wear long shorts, otherwise I look weird. And this is about where most of them ended as far as the side goes. I know it looks terribly short, but honestly, it, it's not. So I'm going to take the electric ones, and I have, I have kind of, like I said, measured out where um, I want them to be cut off. And I'm just going to give us a line just to make sure we got something to follow. 
I've done a really stout job of making sure there's no wrinkles and there is close to even as possible. So I might have to cut off one leg at a time. We'll see. Hadn't touched these in a while. I'm not worried about a little bit of mess up like that as far as a because these are going to fray. This is what I want them to do. So the fraying will take care of any rough edges like that little hiccup I had at the beginning right there. So there's no worries there. And I did cut them a little longer than I was intending to so the fray will have room to start. And I've got a new way that I might be doing a little um, extra to get it to fry faster. I've seen it done in a couple of videos and I thought we might give it a try. But i got to go find the, uh, the tool for it. So anyway, here's my shorts. Good old cut off shorts. Nothing fancy. And yes, it does look angular, but honestly when you look at your shorts, you have an angle to the leg anyway. That's fine. Now the other thing we want to do to get started on our project is we're going to cut up the sides. Now I do not want to cut the pockets. Y'all know how I am about my pockets. So I'm going to cut, I'm going to turn them inside out first. That'll make it easier for me to see. No reason to cut blind. And I'm going to cut along this seam and I'm going to try and cut on this side of the seam so I don't mess with my pockets. And I'm going to go all the way through. And I think I'm just going to do this with my scissors because it's a single layer of denim. It doesn't really need to be kind of fancy, heavy duty cutting. And we're just going to cut right through on both sides. Make sure I kind of expose that seam. I don't want to... I'm probably going to end up cutting that seam out just for bulk. But until I do so, I want to be able to open it up and we'll open the other side up. This is a really common way to do things. It's not fancy, but I need some more summer shorts. And we are into summer nice and heavy right now, and we will be probably until sometime in October. So, now I've got these cut off and I'm going to probably, like I said, cut this seam out, the bulk of it, so it's not in my way. But for right now, my main concern is what we are going to do to decorate these shorts. And we know we want to add some flowers. Oh, and by the way, these legs because they're in such good shape I may be making a bag for a giveaway I'll let you know how that goes <laughs> but I think that's what we're gonna do with the legs so now we just gotta pick us some flowers literally we gotta pick yeah anyway gotta pick some flowers so I'm going to start on this side over here for no reason other than I just feel like it. And some of them obviously have been cut, but we're just going to pick and choose some. And it's really not going to be that difficult because this is just a mesh. And what I can do is I can use the mesh to help sew them on if I need to, but I don't want them to be as three-dimensional as they are on this. So what I want to do is cut it out and there we go. Cut a little bit more of the mesh off over here. It's hard to see. And that could be a flower that I could put anywhere on these pants. We could have a whole garden on these pants and since they're already finished all I have to do is literally stitch around the the finished seam 
So let me cut some flowers out and we will get de decorating and designing our jeans. So this is my preliminary and I do have some lace that I'm going to be putting on the bottom too but this is what I'm thinking first for the front then let's take a look at the back this is what I've got so far and then here's the bottom I have some lace it's the only piece of lace I've got long enough to do this on both legs and it's flowers of course and I think we've used this before we've cut out the flowers for some reason I don't know why but I don't want the whole thing to show what I want to show is just simply the edge of the flowers kind of like the flowers themselves and that's what I want to put on the bottom all the way around the legs Now on this one that I'm putting over here by the pocket, I thought I was going to have to open up the pocket in order to get in here, but honestly I can just peel the pocket back and get in there. So just got to be careful, make sure I don't catch my pocket. You can pin it if you want. I think I can pull it and keep it in place and that way I won't have to worry about, I'm going to go back to purple, um, I won't have to worry about catching my pocket. All of this has been essentially appliqued on. It's all there. And now what we need to do, we've got two things left we want to do to these jeans. Oh, and by the way, hint, if you're going to do this, find something that's easy to go around. Not this. This was turn, 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 turn. It, it was a pain. So just uh, learn from my mistake. Now, I want to apply this to the legs, and I want to apply it in a way that doesn't show anything really but the flowers. So I want to apply that, but I can't decide if I should apply that, then sew up the sides, or if I should sew up the sides, then apply it. I'm, I'm thinking, I'm leaning towards sewing it on and then sewing up the sides, because what we're going to do for the sides is we're going to just wrong sides together we're just gonna seam that open we're gonna leave the the seam on the outside so it'll fray and I'm going to 
I had a lot of room in these pants. So I'm gonna go down and I'm going to go around that rivet if I can, because I wanna keep the rivet, obviously. And um, I think I'll have enough excess that I, in these pants that, that that'll be okay. Because it'll be really hard to get in between that rivet and that seam if I if I try to do it that way. And I don't think it'll take up enough of the slack with how big they were on me. So we'll get to that. First, I'm gonna take this, and I've already measured it as far as what's available. And that's it quadrupled, so I know it'll go around the legs. I'm gonna clip this end off where I had used some of the little flowers. And I think I'm just gonna start at the end down here and go all the way around the leg. And again, I'm gonna put it on the inside. And since I want this to fray, I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna sew it. When I sew it in here, I'm gonna sew it in this line. And you can see it's almost what, it's a little, almost three-fourths, well, it's a little more than three-fourths of an inch into the hemline. So that'll give it plenty of room on the outside here to fray. So I'm just going to, like I said, I'm gonna be kind of eyeballing it and making sure that I don't have too much of the flower showing at the bottom. And I'm gonna pin it, and then once I pin it, I'm gonna turn it over and get a, a, a better look at it to make sure, because it's kind of, it's not a blind seam necessarily, obviously, but I just wanna make sure that I'm not showing too much of the flower on the other side. And I'm just gonna kind of keep it in that three-fourths to an inch range, depending on, because the, the lace curls and does that little wave. So we're just gonna do that first, and once I get it all pinned on, uh, we'll go over to the machine and um, sew it around the legs before we sew up the side seams. Okay, I got the lace all pinned on, both legs. It's really easy to work with when you open up the sides. I'm gonna sew the lace on right along this wide top That'll leave about uh, three-fourths of an inch from this seam to the raw edge where it can fray. And um, I have it pulled up where really you're just seeing the flowers, but of course when it frays, you'll see a little more. But that's what I wanted it to look like. So again, I'm gonna sew it from the back side right down this, this white top of the lace. And then we will sew up the sides and see what happens. Alright, I sewed up one side to see how it would look and I think this is what I'm going for because all of this is going to fray, which is what I want, but I'm telling you right now, it's tough going getting through some of these seams. So just take your time, make sure you have a denim needle, go over it as many times as you can. And I also went around my rivet just because I wanted to keep it. And I think I have plenty of room for as big as these pants were on me, so I just took it up a good, I don't know, inch. So I'm going to show you all how I'm going to fray these. I was thinking about leaving the ends open down here, and I might still open this up. The only thing is, is this lace is here, and I don't really want it exposed. So I'm not sure yet if I'll change that up. But for right now, <clears throat> I think it's okay for it to be sewn down because like I said, we're gonna we're gonna fray this uh, this edge pretty good. So let me go sew the other side again, wrong sides together. We're sewing it as an open seam to the outside. And this is your biggest pain in the tail right here. But if you go behind this seam here, kind of helps get past this because this 
most of this bulk is contained in the serge that was sewing the seams together in the first place. So let me go sew this. We'll give it a try and then if we need to open up this bottom, we will. Okay, we've reached the end where we're just going to give these um, edges a little help with their fraying. And what I have found is I've seen this done and generally it's done with sandpaper. But although I have a Dremel and I have a set of bits including sandpaper, um, I don't have the proper attachments for that sandpaper. So I just wanted to kind of give you a, an idea. This is a, a heavy grit. Um, I don't know what grit stone, but and this is a Dremel and all I'm doing is kind of giving it a little help and I'm just going along the edges. You got to be careful. Don't get your finger. Anyway, it helps start the fuzzing process and um, and then you can, you know, pull it along and after you wash it, of course, you'll get more. But this just kind of helps the fuzzing process. This is what I was talking about earlier about giving it a, uh, doing it a little differently than just pulling at it. And um, this, this seems to work, but it will eat your fabric, so you have to be very careful and not do too much of it. See how that's got a little extra bite in it. Um, it would work better with the sandpaper, but uh, again, I don't have the proper attachment for that. So if anyone gives this a try, let me know how it works. Okay, all my crafty people, we have a finished project. Um, just a little bit of extra with our cutoff jeans. I'm in. I'm really liking the open seam on the side because it's going to give more fraying. I, I, I've never done one like this before, but I think it's going to look really cute. And of course the fraying on the ends is going to continue as we wash them and stuff because these are 100% cotton, so they should fray well. Got all of our flowers placed. Um, these in the back. And this, uh, this open seam on the side had two purposes. One, opening it up makes it easy, obviously, to decorate and um well three closing it up was easy because you didn't have to worry about lining things up as well you know but the main reason is sizing i was able to size these down a couple of sizes by doing this and now i can wear them so if you like this kind of content like subscribe let me know what you think and i will catch y'all on the flip side of our next project.